When it comes to insulin production, well, the pancreas is the focus of everyone's attention, particularly when beta cells fail. Now, to be fair, the failure is relative. The little guys are still pumping out insulin. It's just not enough to meet the extraordinary demand. The unrealistic demand is sparked by widespread insulin resistance, which is a polite way of saying the movers and shakers in the body ignore insulin's advances. Undaunted, the pancreas keeps churning out more and more insulin. This strategy works for a while until the beta cells can't take the pressure. Churning out insulin 24-7 is exhausting. So, why do cells become insulin resistant? At this stage, no one knows for sure. Why insulin becomes the pariah? <laughs> it might have something to do with insulin's pushy personality. Oh dear, uh, too much insulin is definitely rather off-putting. But insulin should only be making deliveries at dinner time. The trigger for beta cells to pump out insulin is primarily glucose. And as long as your beta cells are strong and healthy, glucose levels only rise when you eat something. But in anyone who is metabolically challenged, insulin levels are high morning, noon, and night. Night. <laughs> Where does the insulin come from? Most of us don't actually eat when we're sleeping. On paper, at least, beta cells should get some relief from being the insulin pumping machine. So why is it that people with metabolic issues wake up with insulin levels in the stratosphere? Could the insulin be coming from somewhere else? Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we investigate where all that extra insulin might be coming from. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heffalumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Now, any textbook will tell you beta cells are the only cells that produce insulin. But they're not. Recently, a group of researchers based in the Netherlands rewrote the textbook. Beta cells are not the only source of insulin in the body. They are by far and away the biggest source, but they're not the only cells with this power. The Dutch team found fat cells are insulin producers. Using fancy molecular biology techniques, they screened several different kinds of fat cells, looking to see if the insulin gene was being expressed and whether insulin was being produced. It was. This is an immunofluorescent confocal laser scanning image 
of human visceral fat cells. Now, the enormous green blobs are the lipid droplets in which fat is stored. The red bits peeking through are where an antibody which recognizes insulin has bound, demonstrating that insulin is being produced by fat cells. Now, when the team probed exactly which fat cells could and couldn't produce insulin, both subcutaneous fat cells, that is, fat cells located on the outer layers of your body, and visceral fat cells, that is, fat cells located deep inside your body, could churn out insulin. But baby fat cells, otherwise known as pre-adipocytes, were not insulin producers, no matter where they were located. Interestingly enough, the fat cells made less insulin, not more, when they were exposed to glucose. Now, the actual amount of insulin being produced is tiny, but if you have a lot of fat cells, each producing a tiny amount of insulin, it adds up. Enough to count? Well, maybe. When the researchers plotted insulin levels against BMI in 41 human subjects, ranging in weight from skinny to morbidly obese, they found a straight line, suggesting insulin production by fat cells impacts overall insulin levels. Ouch. Well, fat cells are bad. <laughs> it's probably not a big surprise. Fat cells have a bad reputation. But up until now, the problem with fat cells has been more about insulin resistance, not insulin production. It will take some time to figure out just what fat cells are up to when they churn out insulin. But in the meantime, this research reiterates the importance of working on reducing your fat mass. It will help rain in insulin, literally, since you'll produce a little less. For more tips and strategies that will help you rein in insulin, download our free report. You can find the link in the description below and begin the journey today to better body chemistry and better health. Interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry, or need a little help getting your body chemistry on track, visit our website at www.betterbodychemistry.com. Browse our library or sign up for a body audit. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype know someone battling with weight issues, motivate them to work on reducing their fat mass by sharing this video. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.